This is the trying to conceive part two. Um, if you have not watched part one, I will link it in the description box below, um, or I might link it somewhere in this video so that you can click on it and watch that first. These are all in concession with trying to conceive after a tubal ligation reversal surgery. Nobody had prepared me for the emotional, physical, psychological changes my body would take. And if you think about it, I probably should have been I probably should have been prepared for it because you're changing your reproductive system. You're, you know, you're doing stuff to the inside of your reproductive system and that system produces hormones. Let's just say it's a doozy. I'll start with the body changes after the surgery. They put tape over my stitches and I was a little bit freaked out because one part of my stomach was more swollen than the other part and it looked like a mountainous region. I was like, this is going to be permanent. Like I'm going to have this just braille of a road map on my stomach. It freaked me out because it doesn't look pretty after you get a surgery. Any surgery doesn't look pretty, but this one specifically, it just, it just looked off to me. I think probably about a month after the surgery, the redness had gone away. And at this point, just the actual incision mark was red. And I still had that unevenness. The unevenness, I will tell you, that did not go away for me until about a year after the surgery. So there's that. Then there is also changes to your menstrual cycle. And this is going to be TMI for anybody who's watching. So just TMI. Before my tubal ligation, I was like on the clock. I knew when I was going to get my period. After my tubal ligation... I was all over the place. I couldn't, I, there, I'd there. i skip a period one month, I'd have two the next month. I wouldn't, you know, it, it was just stupid crazy. Now the tubal ligation, ligation reversal surgery, the first six months, the first six cycles that I had were, they were pretty well like on, on the dot. I could tell within a day or two when I was going to have my period and how long it was going to last. After that, the next set of six months, my body started to go through the same episodes from when I had my tubal ligation. I would skip a period. I would have two periods in one month. I would be five days late on a period. And when you're trying to conceive and you're five days late on your period, what do you, first thing that you do, you go buy a pregnancy test. So all these months, that I'm late on my period, you know, I'm freaking out going, oh, it's happened, it's happened, it's happened, we're pregnant, we're pregnant, and then we're not pregnant. After the surgery, I had to wait at least, at least two cycles to start trying to conceive. And the reason they say that is because you're still healing. Even though, you know, six weeks, your body, you feel great, you feel like you can go out there and, you know, run and all that crap. Um, the inside of you is still healing, so they say to wait two cycles. Okay, so the hormonal changes. For me, it was very, very difficult. After, like, I think it was the month after we had gotten our tubal reversal, we had moved to the Midwest, and that's when we recorded that video that you guys had seen about our property and all that stuff. At that point, I was healed. I, you know, didn't have any issues. Um, I, you know, would still, if... I lifted something too heavy, you could still feel the pain and all that stuff, but for the most part I was healed. The hormonal changes started pretty pretty close to that six month mark after the reversal surgery. And I had first noticed it with the change in my menstrual cycle. You know, this whole time we had been trying to conceive and nothing was happening. Negative, negative, not even a false positive pregnancy test. Um, I think my eyes showed me one positive. It wasn't positive. I was just wanting to see a positive. At one point, I knew in my innards that I had an estrogen problem. You know, I would, ha like I said, I would have a period and then it would only be two days. And then I, the next month I wouldn't have a period at all. Um, and I just, I think that my body, my estrogen levels and, and it was trying to balance it out. Expect your body's hormones to be a little out of whack 
Um, it happened to me. I don't think it happens to everybody, but it did happen to me. So just expect that because it will play tricks with your menstrual cycle and your mood. Obviously, I was hormonal. Um, now to the wanting a baby so bad and having hormonal problems that change your menstrual cycle. I swear trying to conceive is the most evil thing you can do to your psyche. <laughs> and the only reason I say that is because when someone like me has gone so long wanting a child and Daniel and I have wanted a child since I think like three years into our relationship, wanting a child for so long and then, you know, you go through all this pain and suffering and um, body pain and just anguish and to get to the point where you can get pregnant which was our tubal reversal process. And then, you know, now it's time to try and conceive and you're excited and you just, you, you're like, okay, we're going to practice like 18 times a day. I don't care if I'm ovulating or not. We're just going to do this thing, right? After a while, you start to get depressed about it. And the reason I say that is because once you've had, you know, a missed period or a late period and you test and it's negative and you got your hopes up and then you know, your hopes are, and your dreams are shattered by that negative pregnancy test. And then, you know, you've just, you've got the ups and downs. And it's not something that happens right away, especially for someone who's had a tubal reversal. It takes a long time. It takes longer to conceive after a tubal reversal than it does for somebody who has never had their tubes tied in the first place. I'm completely 100% jealous of those women that are like, oh, we tried and the first time we got pregnant. <laughs> I would love to be able to say that, but it doesn't happen for all of us. You know, you get depressed. You feel like, okay, maybe this isn't supposed to happen for me. Maybe I had my two boys, which I love so much, um, but maybe that's all God wanted for me. Maybe I'm not supposed to have any more. You start to accept the fact that you're not getting pregnant. So it goes from being angry and being sad to acceptance, and you're like, okay. And that's when you get the people who say, we just stopped trying. Because you get to that point psychologically where you just can't handle any more letdowns. So for us, I mean, we had been trying at that point for close to a year and we were like, you know what? We're just not going to try anymore. I had fertility apps. I had Ovia um, fertility app. What to expect when you're expecting fertility app. Um, I mean, I was trying to track ovulation. I would use a thermometer to track my temperature, um, my basal body temperature. We, I mean, we, we did it. Like, we tried to get pregnant. <laughs> I used to hate when people say, stop trying and it'll happen. As much as I wanted to smack them, they're right. And this is where I, I get into um, revealing that we are, in fact, pregnant. We stopped trying to conceive and we got pregnant. I will leave you on that note. <laughs> the next video is going to be trying to conceive after a tubal reversal success story part three. If I didn't answer any questions or if you guys have questions about any of like the hormone crazy female craziness, leave a comment below, like this video, um, share it, and yeah, I will include the trying to conceive um, episodes so to speak I will take all of your guys's questions and put them all together into one Q&A video so yeah see you in part three